Hey there YouTube, that's it here. I'm going to be bringing you guys a quick little video showcasing my regionals team. I know I haven't really went back and done the full team breakdown showcasing like everything that's special about the team, but I really just wanted to make a video and I happen to be using this team at the time uh, explaining the importance of a very strong turn one. Looking at my team, I have Rotom Cresselia, Gastrodon, Sceptile, Arcanine, and Bisharp. My opponent's team on the top right hand side has Zapdos, Gengar, Terrakion, Bisharp, Mega Venusaur, and uh, Heatran. Now, you may say, you know, that's a. You're uh, talking about the importance of a strong turn one. You, doesn't look like you have a very strong turn one yourself. Actually, it might have a very. I have a very gimmicky turn one. There's a bunch of different leads, but, you know, we're going to talk about that in a later video. This video is going to be talking about my opponent's turn one. Now, what makes a strong turn one? You know, a strong turn one can be a. Uh, well, it can be a fake out user, it can be a scarf user, it can be a fast sash user, or many taunt users. My opponent happens to have a taunt user, but there's nothing that on my opponent's team that stops me from doing what I want, like a fake out user, or like a choice scarf landerus. He has a very obvious turn one in a potential tailwind Zapdos, or a Terrakion lead, or you know a sash Gengar, or a Bisharp to try and counter my Arcanine. His lead is very predictable. Now there's nothing wrong with being predictable, but like I said, there's nothing to stop my opponent from doing what I want. It has nothing really to do with the matchup between our teams. It's just if a team doesn't have like a fake out user, you can generally walk all over it. And this is going to be a great battle uh, showcasing, you know, how to do that. So you're going to see me lead off with Rotom Heat and Sceptile. Now this is the lead I always lead with when my opponent doesn't have a strong turn one. He's going to lead with Gengar. And I think he actually does go with the Terrakion. So yeah, this is his strongest turn one against my team. And you're just going to see me walk all over it and totally disrespect it. So I'm going to Mega Evolve into Sceptile. I'm protecting this turn just because I want to see if he has Icy Wind or Sludge Bomb. I go for the Discharge. It's going to drop Gengar to half. It always does. I get the Para on the Terrakion, but he one buries it out. Great job from him. Seeing the one berry there also shows that the Sash is most likely on the Gengar. Just a little, a uh, little tip right there. And he goes for the Rock Slide. It misses on my Rotom, but it's actually not going to play a huge part in this game. So now that we didn't see Icy Wind. We see uh, he, he's going to Witcher as Gengar, not wanting to die to the uh, Discharge, and he's going to go into his Heatran here. Pretty good play. He was expecting me to Dragon Pulse. I go for a Discharge. He's going to hit both his Pokemon, crit on the Terrakion. Again, it's not going to play that much of a role, because Terrakion is going to get taken out by a plus one Dragon Pulse. See, without a team having any way to really stop Sceptile with a Fake Out or a potential Priority move, there's nothing to really stop me from running all over him. He sends his Gengar back out, but remember, his Gengar always takes about half from Discharge, usually it does about 54%, so I know that I'm completely fine going for Discharge here, but I protect just in case, just in case I get that 49% low end. So I'm playing it even safer than I normally should have. So we're going to see each for a Heat Wave, do a little bit of chip damage to my Rotom Heat, and of course the cat's already out of the bag with a Scarf Rotom Heat, but because my opponent had such a weak turn one, no priority moves anywhere to be seen in his team, there's nothing to stop me from just snowballing this game from here. He's going to Mega Evolve into Mega Venusaur, and you know, gain that thick bat and a ton of bulk, but you know, plus two Mega Sceptile firing off these D-Pulses, there's not really that much my opponent can really do about it. You see I got some crits, but they really, really don't play any part in this game. Uh, we saw that Venusaur is going to go down, Heat Wave is going to be his best chance to retaliate, but since my Sceptile is half Dragon type, I'm just going to be able to live no problem. We see Heatran go with his leftovers, but again, this game is pretty much over. Now, I didn't really want to upload this battle just to showcase me destroying some dude on ladder. What I wanted to do was talk about the importance of a strong turn one. If my opponent would have led with a Pokemon that had Fake Out, or Mock Punch, or any type of priority move, or any type of Scarfed Pokemon, it would have been a lot harder for me to play. Let's say he led with, you know, Zapdos Bisharp and went for a Protect Tailwind. That's definitely a lot stronger turn one, but it's not anything that my team couldn't have dealt with. I think that would have potentially been a stronger idea, but, you know, I just wanted to explain the importance of having a fake out user. I just think that fake out is a move that you need to have in this meta, and it stops teams like mine from really going rampant and just steamrolling you and getting the four stock. And this is how most of my games went at BDC Lancash. So this is kind of like a pre preview to all my games for VDC Lancaster. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you guys start putting fake out users in your team so this doesn't happen to you. And I'll see you guys next time.